How's it going guys? My name is Dom and I'll tell you one thing I learned after coding for 10 years. When it comes to JavaScript, there is almost always something more to learn. Now, that might also apply to other languages, but with JavaScript, there's always just random functions that you never knew existed. So today I'm going to be showing you five must know JavaScript object functions. And I sure hope you guys learned something from today's video. All right, so the first function here is gonna be the assigned function. So this one here is gonna allow you to take the properties and values from another object and then place them on an object of your choice. All right, so as an example right here, I've got this person object with a name of Dom. So I wanna actually change this name here to be Jeff instead and also add an age to this person, all right? So down here, I'm gonna say object.assign and then pass through here the person object as the target, all right? I can now specify an unlimited amount of sources, okay? So as an example right here, put a new object and then I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say here a name of Jeff, okay? And also an age of 39 or 29. So now I'm gonna rename or override my name property from Jeff to Dom and add a new property here of age, all right? So I can now say console.log and log out the value of person. I'll save this, go in, go in the console here and we get this right here. So we can see that the person object has been modified the name of Jeff and the age of 29. Now, there is a slight problem with this in many scenarios, and that is we are modifying the existing object. So, whatever you pass in here as your target, that's gonna be modified. So, we can actually fix this by instead creating a new object instead of essentially, you know, changing the existing one. So, to do this, we can just say here, uh, const new person is equal to the return value of object.assign and then I can pass through here an empty object instead so now person becomes one of the sources and this stuff is now um, of course our new data so whatever you've got inside here is going to override your uh, the actual parameter before it okay so now we can see if I was to log out the value of person, we're gonna keep name as DOM. So we have now not modified the existing object, but of course, if I was to log out the value of new person, this one here is gonna get the name and the age modified. The alternative to using object assign is gonna be using the spread operator, okay? So we can achieve the exact same result here with a bit of a simpler syntax, okay? So we'll get rid of the object assign here and instead just place a new open curly bracket, then say dot, 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 then put also dot, dot, dot in front of our new object right here. And of course, replace the bracket with once again, just a closing curly brace. I can save this and run it again and we get the exact same result. So you might see in modern code, you might see the spread operator, but of course object assign is a little bit more verbose in my opinion. This next one is actually really interesting. So it's called define property and it allows you to basically define new properties on an object in advanced mode, all right? So as an example right here, I can say something like person.name is equal to DOM, but this right here is really simple. That's how I can add the name property to my object. But like I mentioned, define property is this right here in advanced mode. So as an example, we can say object.define property here. Then we're going to be taking through firstly the object to define a new property on. All right, so I can say person right here, then specify the name of your property. In my case, I'm going to use the name of name. Okay, so I can say name right here, then pass through a third argument a bunch of attributes for the property. So it's gonna be an object, right? And I encourage you guys to read up on the MDN documentation because there are many of different options you can pass through here and you can sort of find one that you like. All right, so as an example here, I can show you the writable flag. So I can firstly just say something like value equal to DOM. So this right here, these three lines are the equivalent to saying, you know, person.name is equal to DOM. But like I said, we can define some more attributes for this. One of them is going to be called writable. We can set this to be something like false. So now it means basically I can't change the value 
of the name property using the assignment operator. Okay, so down here, I can say something like person.name is equal to Jeff. Okay, just like before, right? Then I can say console.log person.name. And we're going to say, sorry, we're going to see here that upon running this script, we actually get DOM. So it did not allow us to go ahead with this, uh, you know, change of name here. If I make writable equal to true, then of course it's going to work as we can see. So writable is just one of the many uh, different attributes you can apply to a uh, property when defining it, okay? Another one, another common one might be a getter. Okay, so I'll just remove these two here and instead say something like get. So this get right here is going to simply return the current uh, time. Okay, so I can just say return a new date here. Then just pop down here and I'll just say console.log person.name. I'll run this and we get the current, uh, you know, date time. So look, basically, uh, this getter is just going to run uh, whenever you try to call the dot name on your object. It's like defining some custom functionality. So that right there is defined property. Like I mentioned, you can read up on the docs and find out more about this uh, function if you would like to. Next up, we've got the object.entries function. So this one here is going to be super useful when working with frameworks or certain web APIs. All right. So as an example right here, I've got this object called phone with a brand and model property. Now we're going to be taking this phone object right here and converting it into an array using object.entries. All right. So as an example, right down here, we're going to say const phone as array equal to object dot entries. Okay, there we go. Entries then passing through here the phone. Now, if I was to console dot log phone as array, we're going to see right here a multi dimensional array of our key and value pairs. All right, go down here, run the script. And of course, we get here an array of two elements. The first one is going to be an array of two values. Uh, index zero is going to be the brand or the key. And then of course, index one is going to be the value. So like I said, you're going to run into situations where you actually need to use this function right here. An example might be something like looping over query parameters or accepting input from a user that happens to be in, you know, an object form. So there are definitely going to be some scenarios where you're going to find yourself required to use this object dot entries right here. This next one is going to be the complete opposite of the previous one, right? So this one here is called from entries and it's going to take an array of multiple arrays and then convert that into an object. So we can see here, I got the exact same example, a brand of Samsung and a model of Galaxy S21. So let's convert this right here into an object. So right down here, we can say const phone as object and then just you know, pass in here object dot from entries and take through here the phone array. I can now console dot log the phone as object. And of course, you guys know what's going to happen. We're going to get that object right there. So we can run this. And of course, we get brand Samsung and uh, of course, model Galaxy S21. So very similar to the last one, of course, um, the complete opposite. But this one here is also going to be used for things like frameworks and libraries and just, you know, doing things like converting data. There's always going to be obscure scenarios where you're going to need to use some something like this. And lastly, we have object.freeze. So this one here is going to essentially freeze your object, right? So once you freeze an object, you can't change it. You can't add new properties. You can't uh, modify existing properties and so on. All right. So as an example, got this person, I'll add a name of Dom. Okay. And an age of 29. Now I'm just going to say here, object dot freeze and pass through here the person object. So now if I console dot log person, it's going to be fine. We're going to get those properties. Okay. So we can see that right there. But if I was to say after freezing it, if I say person dot occupation equal to developer, save this and run it, we can see nothing happens. All right. If I was to try and change the name of myself to be Jeff instead, we can see, of course, nothing happens. If I was to try and delete the age property, we can say person dot or 
actually just delete then person dot age here we can see as you as you guys might predict we get nothing so you can't add new properties you can't edit new properties or edit existing properties you can't delete things it's basically a frozen object so the benefit of this one here is going to be when you are designing something like a framework or library and you don't want your your user the developer changing certain things so just sort of like uh, it tries to keep your code in check if you want to make it so you can't change something and that is all for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one and you learned something. If you did, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.